would have been embarrassing. <laughs> the entire time, it's like... <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get going. So, we'll wait for the cue from Cheryl here in a little bit. All right, so I'm Colin Christensen, board member of Social Media Breakfast Seattle. We have an amazing presentation today. Uh, Derek Johnson is gonna talk about mobile marketing, has a vast amount of experience in it. Uh, first, uh, there's a couple events coming up. The Social Media 301 event. Mike Whitmore is here in the audience, and that's another great event concerning social media coming up on June 3rd. And so Social Media Breakfast Seattle for attending. Uh, you can basically go and register and get a discount code on the site. It's SMB is fresh is the code to use. And so feel free to go to the website. It's, uh, what is the website, Mike? Socialmedia301.com. So feel free to go register, check it out. That's gonna be another great event. And so without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Derek Johnson. I actually fall, started meeting Derek Johnson through the internet when he started doing Tatango out of Bellingham. Uh, Tatango is a mobile marketing company that you can send mass text messages out to multiple people at once. So let's say you have uh, a, a baseball game coming up and you're the coach and it rains out one day. All of a sudden, if you need to get the message out to everyone all at once, then you can go to the web interface or this mobile device and just blast it out to everyone at once. And so that's what uh, Derek started and uh, he has an angel backed company. He's now moved down to Seattle. I, I can remember meeting him at Social Media Bre or Social Media Club and saying, what are you doing in Bellingham? Come to Seattle. Seattle is where it's all at. So I'm super stoked that Derek's now down here in Seattle. I saw uh, he started, I, I also do a lot of live streaming stuff. And so he was one of the first people to ever start live streaming their offices and what everybody is up to in their office. And that caught my attention. And so I don't know how that worked out with your investors <laughs> when they can come and see you work all day. <laughs> but, but it worked out and they got a huge ton of press for it. He's also with Business Week, one of the top 25 uh, entrepreneurs, uh, under 25, I believe is what it was. So without further ado, Derek Johnson. <laughs> Thanks. How's everybody doing? That's a little loud, isn't it? Okay, perfect. Uh, this is, to be honest, the earliest I've woken up in a couple months. So <laughs> my goal is to make sure no one in this audience yawns, um, because I definitely am going to be. Um, my name is Derek Johnson, as he said. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is text message marketing. And then in the question and answer, uh, we can talk about any other type of mobile advertising. But what I'm an expert at is text message marketing. So as you can see, SMS or die is a little hashtag. So if you're on Twitter, how many of you guys are on Twitter right now? How many of you guys actively use Twitter? Okay, usually it's a little less. Um, if you guys have any questions, I know some of my people in my office are going to be on uh, Twitter. So if you have a question and you don't want to raise your hand, you can ask it there and somebody most likely will answer. Again, my name is Derek Johnson. Uh, that's my photo. And I started to tango.com in 2007. I started the company at University of Houston. And I was a fraternity member there. And we could not figure out a way to communicate with everybody at the same time. Uh, we tried everything from Facebook, phone trees, bulletin boards, nothing was able to get the message out to a lot of people. And dropped out of school about two weeks later uh, after having the idea and said, you know, I think this is something that we can do and, and something, you know, that will, you know, better at least the fraternity system. So started the company in 2007. Since then, we've really evolved uh, from just fraternities and sororities to pretty much everybody. Uh, and that includes everything from businesses to Fortune 500 companies to small businesses. Uh, churches, conferences, we even do a lot of political work. Uh, we are the guys that did Patty Murray's text messaging campaign, also uh, Scott Brown from Massachusetts, his political campaign. So we've been kind of all over the industry, again, always focused on text message marketing. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've helped over a thousand uh, successful campaigns launch with text message marketing. So here are some of my uh, links, uh, obviously website, Facebook, Twitter, you can SMS me, I'm pretty big into that. Uh, and then email Derek at Tatango. So if you guys have any questions after the presentation or you just don't want to raise your hand, you, know, you can contact me at any one of these. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first tell you what is text message marketing. Because I think a lot of people are confused and, and they're, not, they're clear on what text messaging, but how to use it as a marketing tool, maybe not so clear. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell a story. Uh, we have a local business owner. His name is Mike. Um, he owns a pizza shop. And we're going to go through kind of the struggles that he's been experiencing the last couple of years with Facebook, Twitter, email marketing, and how they integrated text message marketing into that marketing mix. And then we'll end it with questions. Again, this is a pretty high level view, so you know, if you have specific questions, don't hesitate to raise your hand. So the first thing, what is text message marketing? So the first thing with text message marketing is customers have to opt in. Uh, this is unlike you know, email marketing when you can import somebody's email address into your campaign. The only time someone can be part of a text message campaign is if they actually take their phone and opt in themselves. So you can't you know, take somebody's business card, like my business card, look at their phone number and type their phone number into an SMS campaign. And that prevents spam. You know, text message marketing, at least right now, is pretty much spam free. Uh, compared to, you know, like email, you know, the average open rate for an email is less than 20%. That's because there's so much spam out there. People add you to so many lists. Text message marketing, you can't do that. So a customer would add themselves to a list. Then the business would log into any SMS provider. There's a ton of SMS providers out there. Tatango is one of them. They would go on, they would log in, you know, with a password and a login, and they would send their message. We're talking 140 to 160 characters, depends on kind of what you put in the message. And it's simple, it's just a text message. Just straight characters, no pictures, uh, no video, just text. Then the customers, they receive the text message to their mobile phone. Again, 140, 160 characters, depending on the phone um, and the message. They receive the message on the phone. This can be a promotion, a discount, an event reminder. And then the customer comes into the store um, or comes to the church or attends a political rally and shows the text message, usually with a discount or promotion, in the message. So that's how easy text message marketing is. It's not you know, a very complicated um, service or a complicated industry, but there are a lot of nuances you know, going in you know, more in depth into the service. Any questions specifically on just kind of the process or understanding the background of what text message marketing is? That's good. Yeah. So if you uh, partnership with a company like Tatango or one that is following both FCC, MMA, Mobile Marketing Association, and carrier compliance issues, we will not allow you to import phone numbers. So we don't even have a place that you could actually import a phone number. Um, so that kind of uh, allows it. Obviously, there's companies that aren't following the rules, just like there are in any industry. Uh, but if you go with one of our kind of companies, uh, there is just no way that you can even plug a phone number in there. It has to be you taking the mobile phone and joining the campaign. And I'll show you specifically how uh, one, of this, one of the businesses we work with you know, did all of this process. So who uses it? Um, like I said, it is pretty widespread, and we work with pretty much everything from restaurants to you know, some of the mega churches in the country. Uh, retailers, politicians, salons, grocery stores, nightclubs, wine bars, bakeries, uh, churches, specialty stores, food trucks have become really popular lately. It really applies to pretty much every type of business. And it's crazy, uh, we get phone calls every day from people interested, and it really is varied. So whatever kind of business you guys represent, most likely there's a way for you guys to use text message marketing. So now it's story time, and this is the more fun uh, part of the presentation. So this is Mike. Uh, this is actually Photoshop, or, uh, iStock Photo Mike, because he doesn't have a good picture online. But Mike is a real business owner. And Mike is a business owner in Bellingham. Uh, we originally started the company in Bellingham, recently moved to Seattle. And Mike owns a business called New York Pizza. Uh, New York Pizza, they have two locations. And they serve great beers. They have a great happy hour. Um, it's a great place to be. And he was looking for different marketing methods you know, to drive traffic. So I went to him uh, one day, and we were kind of down the street. I came to him and I said, you know, what about text message marketing? Why don't you try that? And he said, Derek, I've, I have so much on my plate right now. I have, you know, employees, payroll, I make the pizzas, you know, I'm dealing with everything in the business, in addition to email, Facebook, and Twitter. It seems like right now I just don't have time to do anything else, whether it's marketing or business. I, I just don't have any time. So I looked at what he was doing and I said, you know, why don't we have, you know, a challenge? If I can, let's say, you know, challenge SMS versus, you know, email marketing, Facebook, and Twitter, and I can replace one of them because I can show it's more successful, will you replace one of your, you know, marketing channels? 
And he goes, yeah, sure, it doesn't matter to me because you know, all I want is something that's effective. You know, but I'm only going to you know, stick with the three that I really like right now. So I said, OK, that makes sense. But I said, you know, we have to have a time frame. I'm a very metrics driven person. So you know, I need to know what the time frame is. I need to know what we're measuring. So at the very end of the six months, I haven't wasted my time. I can actually sit down with him and say, you know, did it work or did it not work? So he gave me six months. He said, you have six months to figure out you know, and show me that text message marketing is better than Facebook, Twitter, and email marketing. So I, I left the restaurant and I turned around, you know, right as I got out the restaurant, I said, wait, better is kind of one of those words. If you guys are a consultant out there, what the heck does that mean? So I turned around and I said, Mike, you know, what are we going to use as the measuring stick? Because Facebook, Twitter, email, you know, there, there's likes and there's retweets and then text messages, you know, there's subscriber growth. What matters for you? And he, he kind of looked at me because I don't think he's ever heard this question from any kind of business because their business is just trying to sell him, not trying to figure out what he actually wants. So I talked to him and he said, you know, the main thing for me is to make sure my family can eat. And I go, okay, that makes sense. And I go, how do you make sure your family can eat? He goes, well, more revenue for my business. Okay, what causes the revenue? And he said pretty bluntly, which actually made a lot of sense to me, he said butts in the seats. And this is kind of one of our mottos in our company is this is what text message marketing does. It puts butts in your seats. So what we decide is this is going to be the measuring stick. You know, after six months, we're going to sit down, we're going to now, you know, we're going to look at Facebook and Twitter and email marketing compared to text message marketing and figure out, you know, how many butts did it put in the seats. So let the challenge begin. So as we said, customers will opt into the campaign. So let me show you some of the examples of how you get customers to opt into a text messaging campaign. This is a table tent. Um, usually they're put on every single table and at the bar. So what you would do, or what a customer would do is text the word NYP, which is what we call a keyword in the industry. These are unique to every single business. And then you would text it to our phone number, which is a short code, to 68. 398. And you could actually do this as a live campaign. Um, every single business, politician, so you could text, you know, Patty to 68398 or, you know, vote to 68398, you'd be joined to another campaign. So they put these everywhere. So on the front door, text NYP to 68398. Uh, a good kind of reference point for you guys is when you do do this, you need to make sure you're telling the customers what the heck they're going to receive. I see too many times you know, on Facebook and Twitter in a store, it says, hey, join us on Facebook and Twitter. Why? You, know, you need to tell your customers why they're doing things nowadays. So for a weekly coupon sent straight to your mobile phone, text NYP to 68398. This one was kind of cool too. Uh, in the bathroom on every single mirror. <laughs> he's, a pretty, uh, he's a pretty smart guy in terms of marketing. So step one, wash your hands. Uh, step two, text NYP to 68398. And step three, return to your pizza. So, you know, and then at the bottom it says some information. So again, everywhere that your customer's eyes are, you're trying to get them to opt into your, you know, text messaging campaign. Any questions on opting into a text message campaign? Uh, another uh, kind of interesting way that is, is sparking or seeing much more growth right now is the QR code. So any customer now can scan their QR code, and it pre-populates the text message, opens it, puts NYP to 68398. Um, and as you can see, some people are already doing it. So it's a great way to do that. Still, in my opinion, QR codes are um, not being used as much as they should be. Uh, what we see from this campaign with thousands of uh, subscribers, we're not seeing hardly any people opt in via QR code. Um, so that is kind of a warning, but also it's a pretty cool thing. So I wouldn't replace text NYP with a QR code, but if you got extra space, you know, definitely put it up because this is the way things are going. Yeah. You can, and we've seen people put their logo in the middle. Uh, we have one customer that has like a six-foot QR code in their business that is on the wall. Again, also putting things like you know why they're joining at the bottom. Um, we've also seen people put a QR code up on the wall and then below it text NYP to 68398. So you can do it either which way. I'd say use it together. Don't just put this by itself. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other options to, to sign up for the, for the text, like in the website or actually through Facebook? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was asking, you know, what other ways can people opt in through, you know, Facebook or through a website? Right now, Tatango only allows it via, you know, short code, so you text into the system. The reason we do that is that to follow the MMA and the carrier compliance issues, what has to happen is if you type a number into a website to join a campaign, they have to send back a confirmation code to your phone, like a PIN number, and then you have to enter that PIN number back into the website. Well, we used to do that maybe a year or two ago, and it just got so confusing from a customer standpoint. They would type their number in, leave the computer, get a text message with the PIN, then have to go back to the website. What we found is even on Facebook and you know, Twitter and, and websites, it's much more effective just to put text NYP to 68398. Everybody has their mobile phone on them pretty much at all times. Uh, how many guys don't have your mobile phone right now? OK, there's two. <laughs> Usually it's nobody, so. so let the record reflect. We have two people without their mobile phone here. So what happens when somebody uh, opts in, so they text NYP to 68398, uh, they'll receive a standard message. New York Pizza, you've signed up to receive these mobile alerts. Um, this is all automated by our system and any system out there in terms of an SMS uh, system. And then we put at the bottom all the terms and conditions. Also, at any time, anybody can reply stop to any single message, and we automatically remove them from the group. SMS spam is one of the worst things, I think, because it's so intrusive. So again, we want to make sure people opt in. And then when they don't want to be part of the campaign, we want to make sure they can opt out right away. So our system even takes it a step further. We have Mechanical Turk that uh, monitors replies. So any reply, like, I don't want to receive these messages. I moved out of here. No thank you. All those different combinations will automatically remove them from the group also. So really, from your standpoint, it's a very simple process. You don't need to manage any of this. It's all managed by our system. There are some, um, if you go out there and look, there are some companies that will offer what we call a bounce back message, uh, which gets a little more technical. But what it is, is it will give you an initial message, and then it will give you another message that gives you a discount for joining the campaign. The reason we don't like those is that if you do that, let's say you know, I travel all the time, and I go to, let's say, a Red Robin in Oregon and I sign up for their text messaging list because they gave me some kind of discount. Well, what I'm going to do because I don't live in Oregon is I'm going to opt out of the group the minute I get the discount. So really, from my perspective, this is for future alerts, future promotions. You want to get people in there not just because they're being triggered, but because they really want to receive the messages every single week. So business sense promotion. Again, they just log into any one of the SMS providers and send the text message. Customers receive the promotions on their mobile phone. And here are some of the promotions that New York Pizza sends. They send one a week, uh, which seems pretty you know, uh, drastic in terms of, that seems like a lot of text messages. But you'd be surprised. Uh, with the amount of subscribers in Bellingham, I walk down the street and people are like, hey, I haven't received my text message this week from New York Pizza. <laughs> people are really looking forward to this. Uh, that comes back to consistency, too. You don't want to do it every week and then stop and then do it every year or do it every month or every quarter. You want to make sure you know, it's every month or every week or every Wednesday. You want to make people consistent so they know when they can expect the text message. Also, uh, New York Pizza, obviously you can go to New York Pizza, I would say, once or twice a week. Um, for a barber shop, we work with a lot of salons. Uh, I would say for them, you do it once a month. So it's really how many times your customer comes in you know, during that time frame that you will actually want to send a text message to them. So New York Pizza, come in and get a free appetizer when you purchase $25 or more. A lot of people think text message marketing is about discounting. And I know with Groupon and Living Social, it's all about discounting right now. What we look at with text message marketing to be effective is you want to upsell your customers. So they know what the average ticket size per customer is, how much they're paying per time they come to the restaurant. We want to make sure they spend more money. Or we want to, like I think this one is, uh, pizza is a very, very cheap product to produce. But they know that drinks they make a lot of money on. So they want to give away the free products, but upsell the other ones. And a lot of the time, you know, dine-in only. Also, you want to put when the actual discount expires. What's great about text messages, the average text message is open within four minutes of being received. So you can seriously have a text message promotion expire half an hour, an hour later, because most people will get that text message. How do you know that? How do you know when they open it? So we don't have that information. That's provided to us by the carriers, the actual aggregate information. 
but because of the privacy laws, we cannot tell whether they open the message, how fast they open the message, because that's really on your personal time. Um, just like, unlike email, where they attach like a GIF into it, so you can actually see what's being opened, text messaging, it's just 150, 160 characters. So that's more of an aggregate kind of stat. Um, so you can't tell when somebody actually opens it, but 98% of text messages are open right now. At least that's what the carriers are saying. Yeah, it's like, who doesn't open a text message? <laughs> Except for maybe my parents, so. Uh, this is another one, Happy New Year's from NYP. Show this text to receive a complimentary bottle of champagne tonight with any purchase. Obviously, I think they sent this out at like 6 or 8 p.m. that night, and that expires that night. So again, with that four minutes you know, average open time, you know, send it out and put an expiration date so people actually take action really quickly. We've actually seen um, some really good successes with people that do kind of a small window of opportunity because people, when they open the text message, if they put it away and they say, oh, it's good for two weeks, they usually forget about it because they get other text messages. So if you make it really quick, like, hey, come in for a coffee you know, within the next hour, well, you know, I'm kind of tired. I want to go and get a coffee. So it's a much more effective method, and you can only really do this with you know, text messaging because of that open rate. What's the lead time to set something up? I mean, could a restaurant, for example, walk out on the floor and say, oh, man, we're flat tonight. Yep. Can I quickly turn and try to gin up some business, or is there some kind of? Yeah, so it depends on who you're using, obviously. Our service, uh, the average business owner spends only it's, uh, one and a half minutes to three minutes on our website uh, per week. So we don't get very much traffic because they come in, all they do is type their message and click send. It, it, it's that easy. It's easier than sending an email, let's just say. Well, what's the difference between this and now having Facebook uh, with text messaging? So you can do a Facebook campaign, but run it through the text messaging. Correct. Well, what we're seeing, and I'll do a comparison between Facebook. With the Facebook SMS, um, what we're seeing is just nobody subscribes to receive SMS from a business. Because Facebook is more about you know, the status updates, the photos, you know, the conversation, where if I signed up to receive New York Pizza's text message alerts, I'd be receiving two to three a day, which doesn't work for me, you know, because I only want it once a week, because I want the most important thing being sent via text message. So it's just a different kind of medium. It's kind of like saying, OK, I could subscribe to their Twitter alerts, but I'd be receiving like 12 a day. Um, and I, I just don't like New York Pizza that much. Don't tell him that either. So. <laughs> So customers uh, redeem promotion. Again, they would take that text message in. I think on these ones, these ones don't have a coupon code. Uh, they don't have you know, an advanced POS system. But you can actually put you know, just a regular coupon code at the end here. The waiter or waitress would look at that coupon code, either write it down or just take it down on their notepad you know, to deduct 20% off the bill. Um, and a pretty simple system. There, you, know, there's no, you, know, you don't have to take anything. You don't have to scan anything. You just show the text message. And again, that's what we call butts in the seats, actually people coming in with a text message, showing it, you know, and buying something. And that's you know, how Mike feeds his family and gains revenue for his business. So after six months, he did this for six months. He grew his list. Uh, he sent out messages weekly, consistent messages. Um, we tracked everything from Facebook, Twitter, email, and text messaging because my job is really on the line because I want this client. And I think even during this time, we were giving it to him free. We said, look, you know, during this time, you know, I'm going to come back after six months and we'll compare it. If it's better than one of the others, you know, then you'll start paying for it. And he was completely fine with that as long as it puts butts in the seats. So again, we sat down, uh, six months later, we sat down table and we looked at email, Facebook, and Twitter compared to SMS. So the first one was email versus SMS. So the subscriber growth. Uh, was pretty ridiculous. Obviously, they were using email. So it was obviously going up. And this, you know, I can't divulge the numbers that they have, but in terms of the growth, um, we're talking about a couple thousand subscribers into their text messaging list. So as you can see, it's a much higher growth rate. The reason being, at least in my opinion, again, this, you know, is what I think, is, you know, most restaurants, most businesses that I go to and I talk to, they're collecting emails via pen and paper. Um, we actually went to a company called Witch Witch on the AV, and it seriously took a minute and 45 seconds to fill out their entire form with my name, my phone number, my age, my email address, everything on there. Compared to text messaging, it can take you know, 10 seconds. You know, that guy just opted into that QR code. I saw him put his phone, pull it down. 
you know, two or three seconds. So it's a much quicker opt-in process. Plus, you can put it everywhere. So you know, if you're collecting emails and you say, you know, hey, give us your email, write it down. Well, how many of you guys have a pen when you're eating? You know, and then you got to borrow a pen from the waitress. Uh, yeah. So, and then if you look at mobile phones, on the other hand, SMS, it's fast. You know, all you have to do is you know, scan it or text it in. So it's a much quicker process. Plus, you can put things like in the bathroom. Are you going to really ask people to fill out a form in the bathroom with their email address? That would just look really weird. <laughs> By putting a, you know, a, a vinyl decal on the, on the mirrors, it seems almost normal. So, Open rate. Uh, like we said, uh, text mess. <laughs> like we said, text message marketing has a 98% open rate. Email, on average, has about a 22% open rate. So it really depends. You know, if you're looking at this, you know, I think a lot of it is because you know, SMS, you're only receiving about 150 messages per month, um, plus the fact that there is no spam via SMS. So in terms of open rate, you know, Mike was receiving a much higher open rate in terms of SMS than it was email marketing. The reason being, I think, is that the average person, and this is the average person, I'm pretty sure everybody in this room gets more emails, is 1,200 messages per month via email. So you know, how, how many times do you, you know, look at something and you don't even open it, you just delete it? And that's why email marketing doesn't have that you know, high of an open rate. Compared to text messaging right now, the average person is 150 text messages received. Again, that bumps up that open rate to 98% because you're just not flooded with as many messages. That's great. All those things are really cool. And I think a lot of you know, consultants will focus on those things. They'll say, hey, look at your open rate. It's really good. Look at your growth rate. It's really good. What Mike really cared about, though, was redemptions. You know, how many people actually came into the store and put butts in the seats? So the average text messaging campaign that we run for a restaurant right now is anywhere from 5 to 15%. I think Mike is averaging about 10%. So he's kind of right in the middle there. Email marketing, uh, we would, you know, he would try all different types of you know, email campaigns. He would get less than 1% uh, redemption rate. And I'm pretty sure if you guys are running email campaigns out there for a restaurant, you'll realize you know, this is kind of what it is in terms of the email marketing space. So again, butts in the seeds. Excuse me. What yeah. It seems like a fairly manual process to track that butt in the seeds. Correct. Yep. Relying on a waiter or waitress to, you know, in a busy day, remember to mark that down. I mean, what kind of systems or how do you help make sure that you're capturing that data? I mean. Yeah. So. To be honest, most small businesses, um, it's more of kind of a feeling. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so he was asking, how do you track, you know, the redemption rates, especially for you know a small business when they have a lot of things going on during the day. Most small businesses, um, they want butts in the seats, but they don't know how to track it. So we worked with Mike to kind of explain how to track things. What they did because they're not using a POS system in terms of a coupon code, what they did is they just had a pad of paper, so every waitress would just check a little thing every single time that they had one of the campaigns run. And again, with the small um, window uh, expiration date, it was pretty obvious you know, when each campaign was being run. Again, for a bigger one, you, know, you use a coupon code. Like we work with a lot of franchises. Um, they use a coupon code, and they can track that immediately and pull spreadsheets. That's not on our side, though, because we just send the text message on their behalf. They can do whatever they want on the tracking side. But it is, if you are you know, consulting for a company, you want to track the messages to figure out what those redemption rates are. But on the other hand, too, for small businesses, when they see a ton of customers coming in, you know, 10% redemptions off you know, a couple thousand people in their text messaging campaign, the, the business owner just knows deep inside that it's working. Again, why, it, compared to email marketing, is it working? I think for most people, for email marketing, only 33% of people check uh, their email on their mobile phone. So, okay, you have 33% of people that can actually bring that email in on their mobile phone. The rest of the people have to actually print the coupon off you know, from their computer. You know, we own a printer because we own a company, but if I was you know, if I, at home, I, I don't own a printer. So you know, for a lot of people, I think it presents a lot of challenge. Again, SMS works on 98% of all phones. So any phone, you can just grab it, show it to the waitress or waiter, and you're good to go. So it's a much easier redemption process. So as we like to say, SMS is winning on this one. <laughs> There's always like two people that don't laugh because they just don't get it, but, which is okay. Which is okay, yeah. 
which is okay. So now, uh, Twitter versus SMS. Again, subscriber growth. You know, decent subscriber growth, um, but again, SMS was just, you know, the growth pro um, projection was just so much higher. Why? This one's kind of frustrating for me because I see so many businesses using Twitter uh, for their marketing. Twitter and you know, Comscore, they say it's about 9% of the United States uses Twitter. I've seen statistics that somewhere in the Midwest, less than 0.4% of people use Twitter. Um, obviously, we all use Twitter in here, but when I go to a normal conference that's not a tech conference or a university to go speak, almost nobody has Twitter. Everybody has SMS, most people have Facebook, a lot of people have MySpace still, uh, which kind of baffles my mind. And, but again, Friendster. yeah, or Friendster. <laughs> What baffles my mind, though, is you know, the customer usage, there's so many businesses using Twitter, but the majority of their customers aren't using Twitter. Maybe it's the power customer that's using Twitter, but the majority of their customers are not using Twitter. So that's what's causing, I think, you know, the growth rate of Twitter to go slow for your business and SMS to skyrocket. You just have more of your customers able to join the campaign. And I even think 72% is pretty low. Um, actually, 72% is how many people send a text message at least once a day. You know, so even that person that sends it maybe once a week can still opt in. Yeah. Was the SMS campaign communicated through Twitter? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, was the SMS campaign communicated through those social networks? Yes, and that's what I'm going to explain. The next um, kind of portion is how to use Facebook and Twitter. You know, to obviously grow your campaign. So redemption rates. So you know, Mike would put out a discount uh, uh, on Twitter, and uh, compared to SMS, it was less than one percent. It was, it was so bad that he really didn't didn't even see the purpose of continuing to use Twitter. The reason is, I think, in my mind, the average person on Twitter. You know, if you're sitting in front of your computer all day, all night, looking at messages, the average person's getting 9,100 messages per month. You know, feed fed through their you know stream. Again, the average person on SMS is receiving 150. So it's really just you know, a message overload, as I like to say. It's like how you know, on Facebook, my mom's on Facebook and she says, oh, did you see those great photos I posted? Mom, you're one out of 9,100 you know, people and messages that I've seen all month. You know, the chance that I see that one message and I take action is very, very low. Compared to SMS, you have the 98% open rate and only 150 messages that your business is competing with. So again, that's why the redemption rates, I think, are so high. And that's why also, you know, Mike, in terms of text messaging for Twitter, you know, another win for SMS. Because again, it put butts in the seats. And that's really all Mike cares about is butts in the seats. You know, when um, he showed me the Twitter, he said, Derek, Twitter's been seen pretty good. The growth is high. I got a lot of retweets. I got a lot of mentions. And then we kind of looked at it and said, Mike, what you're talking about, though, is all the, all the stuff behind there, what you really care about, what pays your bills, is the redemptions. And at that point, he kind of went, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, SMS definitely wins for that one. Now let's go to Facebook versus SMS. This graph is a little better. Um, obviously, Facebook, they started off because uh, they were running with Facebook. Their growth has been pretty steady. The reason I think it's, it's similar to SMS is because, you know, at least the statistics that are being put out right now, 50 to 60% of people have a Facebook account, you know, especially for crowds like this, pretty much 100%. Where SMS is only 72%, so we're only about 20% different here. So that's why I think the graphs are pretty much the same. If they would have started out zero, it would be almost you know, the same. Question? Yeah. Was he using a fan page or was he Correct. using ads? Yes, he was using a fan page, he just a fan page. Ad Correct. Oh yeah, so he was asking if uh, the Facebook fan page was using ads or was it growing organically. So they were advertising exactly the same way that uh, the text message campaign was. So in the store, uh, they were putting, hey, join us on Facebook or become a fan on Facebook. Pretty much every single place, like on those table tents, on the back of the table tent would be the Facebook and Twitter. They weren't flooding. They, correct, yeah. And we wanted to keep it kind of the same so that they weren't obviously flooding the market with you know, the, the fans. And then obviously on SMS, they weren't buying phone numbers either. So then, again, it comes down to redemption rates. You know, they put a coupon or promotion out on Facebook, and they put one on, on an SMS. You know, what was the difference in terms of redemption rates? 
It was a little higher, um, again, I think just because more people use Facebook and they're a little more in touch with it, I would say. Um, but again, SMS was 10%. I think here is like 2.5% uh, for one of their uh, Facebook campaigns. So again, it's a much higher redemption rate. Again, it puts butts in the seats. The reason I think, again, you know, 9,100 messages per month uh, compared to 150 messages per month. You know, and that's calculated, I think, with the 250 average friends and them posting a certain amount of times. You know, the chances that, you know, I'm pretty sure if uh, the redemption rate's here, if everybody saw the Facebook message, I'm pretty sure it'd be much higher. But the problem is not everybody sees the Facebook message. So therefore, you just, you know, you can't have that high redemption rates. On the other hand, text messaging, 98%, you know, see the text message. So you're getting pretty much every single person's phone number to actually see your promotion, which I think is key, you know, if you're trying to run some type of promotion. Let's put one more up here. So at this point, Mike was like, you know, maybe I have a dilemma. Well, and that was the last time. <laughs> so SMS is winning on all fronts in terms of butts in the seats, not retweets, not mentions, not fan likes, not you know, shares, anything like that. Mike cared about butts in the seats, and he gave me six months to prove it. SMS was winning on all three fronts. So he had a dilemma. You know, which one does he toss in the trash? And, and I didn't even have an answer for this one because I was like, okay, you know, I, I see the value in Facebook and Twitter and email, but he said that the one that, you know, it beats, we get to replace. Well, it beat everyone by, you know, leaps and bounds. Luckily, though, we found a solution that he doesn't have to toss any of these in the trash. Mike's answer, and I think most businesses' answer, and how they should set up an SMS campaign if they're using Facebook and Twitter and even Groupon um, right now, is to use Facebook, Twitter, email marketing, and funnel the people that are actually seeing your messages into a funnel to transfer them to your SMS campaign, like uh, what his question was. Some of the examples. Uh, that Mike does. So he sends out email uh, announcements, and in the email, either you know, text NYP to 68398, or he puts it on the right-hand tab side, so it's always there, text NYP to 68398. Little circle there. Uh, New York Pizza, like he said with the Twitter campaign, you know, if you love our food, we strongly suggest that you text NYP to 68398. Again, for those people that are actually noticing that message, you know, they're going to join. But the problem is with 9,100 messages, you know, the chance that they're even going to see this is pretty low. Even on Facebook, um, after we presented to him and we said, you know, this, these are the redemption rates, this is how many butts in the seats you're putting in, he said, how can I promote my text messaging campaign the biggest on my fan page? Because that's the thing that makes me the most money. So what we did is we replaced his avatar here uh, with a big phone that says text NYP to 68398. And you go to his Facebook page now, you know, every single week he's putting something in there about text NYP to 68398. Because he wants those people that are seeing those messages to be funneled into the text message campaign. Because that's really how you bring customers into your door. Um, another thing that has worked really well is in-store promotions. So every single thing in his store is really branded, you know, text NYP to 68398. Um, also, he does the Facebook and the Twitter advertising because let's say they don't, they don't have a brand, you know, maybe it's their first time at that restaurant, they don't want to give them their mobile phone number, but they want to become a Facebook fan. Get them as a Facebook fan first, then as you build trust and relationship with that customer, funnel them into the SMS campaign. So that's pretty much all. It, it, it's not rocket science, text message marketing. Um, it doesn't have any secrets. It's a very simple uh, process. You guys can download this presentation if you have a smartphone, or you can just email me and I'll send it to you. Um, here's all the information if you have a question. Again, my name is Derek Johnson. Um, do you guys have any questions about anything mobile? It, obviously, I know text message marketing, but anything else I can answer to. Yeah. So his, yeah. so his question was, you know, what other uses can you, you know, use text message marketing for? Really anything that you want to communicate to your customers, whether your customers, like we have uh, mega churches that use our service. They bring, you know, students in to make sure that, you know, they come on time. If there's snow cancellations, they send out text messages to make sure, you know, people don't show up. Um, they also send things out. 
um, like you know, when they're raising money. So they'll send, you know, hey, call this phone number and start donating. So it really depends on kind of what your end goal is. Uh, we have politicians, obviously. They use text messaging to drive traffic to an event uh, to get out the vote on you know, the voting day. So a lot of politicians, they'll build their list, they'll send a message once a month, and then five days before the event, they're text messaging every single day. And they're telling you and you to grab one of your friends and go to the voting you know, booth. They call that like get the vote out. So it really depends on what your end goal is. For a politician, it's getting people to vote for him. Uh, for a restaurant, it's you to get butts in the seats. Uh, for a church, it's to get more people involved and to you know, uh, have you know, more people involved in the church. So it really depends on what kind of business you are, but it really works for any type of organization. We still even service the fraternities, and for the fraternities, it's to get more guys and girls to the party. So it really depends on you know, what business you have. In the back. Oh, yeah. Do you have any demographic data around the age groups or genders that are most actively opting into branded text messaging? So text messaging is so new right now, that information really isn't that available. Um, we do have information on text, message, text messaging. Uh, obviously, you know, the 13 to kind of 18 year olds are the ones that are texting a lot. Um, but the, you know, the parents in the, in the long tail is about 150 messages received. Usually it tends more the women are text messaging more than the men. Um, but as I see kind of things growing, you know, 65 plus, maybe three years ago, were not text messaging at all. Now they're sending like 50 text messages a month. So it keeps on you know, going to the right in terms of you know, growing that subscriber base. I just read a study, I think it was by Hip Cricket. Uh, they're another SMS provider in town. I think it was 65% of people want to opt into a loyalty program if it's available via SMS. So customers want to do this. I mean, the customers that don't want to do it, and we get this question all the time, well, I don't think my customers want to do this. Those customers don't have to do it. You know, you're not spamming them, you're not you know, violating their privacy, you're letting them opt in. So if they don't think you know, t uh, SMS is the way they want to receive the messages, point them to Facebook, point them to email, and that's why I think those things are still important. Yeah. De hey, Derek, I uh, wanted to find out, what's the drop-off rate? So with this particular client, you know, people would opt in, and I'm sure at some point they fall off or, or opt out later. What's that rate look like? It's very low, uh, less than 0.2% for this campaign. Um, the reason is, and it really depends on the campaign, for a politician, the last day uh, after the vote, their dropout rate is huge. If you are sending quality messages out, the dropout rates are very, very low. And the majority of dropouts for the people you surveyed are because they moved away, they no longer, they're on a diet maybe, they don't want to you know, be influenced by the text message. It's a very, very low dropout rate. What we say in the text messaging industry is we call the quarter test, uh, this kind of an in, or internal uh, test is if your message, let's say you're receiving New York Pizza's message, but let's say Tango is charging you for every message, let's say a quarter, would it still be worth it for you to be part of that group? So that is what we call the quarter test, and it just shows you have to have value in every single text message before you send it. Um, you know, obviously Twitter, I, I don't see people instituting the quarter test for Twitter because you know, it's really nice outside, I, I just went to a presentation, I'm not gonna pay 25 cents to hear you know, that from your business. But if it's a discount that gives me maybe two or three dollars off, sure, I'll pay a quarter. So we use the quarter test within our company. Yeah. Um, is it only uh, the, the coupons? Are they only valid? Oh, sorry. Are they only valid for people that have opted in, or let's say I get one and I forward it to friends? Can they use it too? And then also, with um, a lot of smartphones now having group messaging, is there going to be uh, maybe you know? forward this to all of your friends and then you can, you know, you can all come together or whatever. Is there plans for including that as well? Yeah. So, so we get that question a lot. You know, people obviously can forward messages from their mobile phone. And unfortunately, with text messaging, you know, you can tell it's coming from 68398 if you want to be, you know, that stringent about your rules. What we like to say is that's great that they're forwarding it. Uh, because most likely that person will see value in that text message and they'll say, how can I opt in to get these also? So we see it almost as a benefit that SMS is so easy to forward. Um, so we just, we allow that. Again, if you really want to crack down on make sure no one forwards it, all you have to do is tell your waitress or waiter that if it doesn't come from 68398, you know, it's not a valid coupon. But we like to tell businesses, you definitely want your customers to forward it out to people. We've seen really big success in the nightclub industry with that. People love forwarding text messages. And then people will come to the door, they'll get free cover, and then they'll go, well, how do I get free cover next week? And they go, oh, you just text you know, NYP to 68398. 
We've also seen people in the actual text message, if forwarding is happening a lot, we see in the text message promotion at the bottom, you put, you know, to join this list, text NYP to 68398. So if it gets forward to someone else, you know, they can opt in. But yes, uh, phones are becoming, you know, more, you know, you can send multiple text messages from one phone. Um, so I think that just helps the SMS marketing space. Hey, Derek, a um, couple questions. At what point does Mike need to own his own short code? Mm -hmm. Because he's kind of dependent on that number, right? So yep. all his collateral has that. And we're also seeing where our clients do national campaigns, they're starting now to append uh, an opt-in to their outgoing text messages. So for, for example, if I opt in for Weather Channel, yep. SMS, alert, the last 20 characters is kind of like a call to action. Hey, for special umbrellas, do this. What's the MMA stance on yeah. the, you know, is that so th seen as growing your opt-in list? I mean. The, the conclusion of this is grow the opt-in list for SMS as fast as possible, right? Correct, yep. So uh, there's two questions yeah, in there. Questions. One is owning your own short code, uh, which I kind of look as owning your own Facebook or owning your own Twitter. Uh, the 68398 number is very, very expensive. Uh, we're talking about $1,000 per month uh, to lease the phone number from the cell phone carriers. Then you're talking about $2,500 per month on top of that to manage the short code, and that's paid to an aggregator. And then on top of that, you're paying the per message fees. So Mike, he's only sending maybe five or 10,000 messages a month. Uh, for that kind of quantity, you're gonna be paying a lot of, you know, uh, I'd say, gosh, anywhere from five to six cents per text message. Um, so it's a very costly product where we're sending, you know, I think we just passed 100 million text messages. We make sure that, you know, those prices are passed down to our customers. So you're actually sharing the short code. The only reason I would say to use your own short code is if you're trying to do an interactive campaign. Um, there's too many, like Patty Murray, there's no reason for her to have her own short code because all she's doing is accepting phone numbers and sending messages out. Now you'll see things like at, I think Quiznos right now, um, right now they say, you know, text uh, your email address to something, uh, to a short code. That's when you need your own short code so that you know, it's, it's not a, a keyword that they're using, they're typing in an email address. So we need to, on our side, have a special system built for that. That's usually when you want to have your own short code for more of a back and forth kind of communication or doing something that's not normal. Um, but usually it's not worth it in terms of the cost, um, unless you're a big company, obviously. But even some of the big companies like Disney, they're doing exactly like this, but they're spending more money because, you know, they want their own short code, which I don't see the value in. And then the second question was, uh, getting people from one text message list to another text message list, right? So what he's saying is, you know, maybe you'll see, receive, you know, e, you know, news alerts, you know, like Brad Pitt did something, and at the very bottom it'll say, you know, opt in to receive P to Pitt alerts. The only thing you have to watch out for that is that if they opt in on that short code, you can only send them messages through that short code. So if you want to, let's say, opt in to a to Tango campaign from an e news alert you have to tell them text uh, you know, PETA to 68398. You can't have them reply to that short code and then switch them to this short code. And I think the carriers are becoming more and more strict about these things because they saw what happened with email. You know, it's just a free for all pretty much and everybody can do really whatever they want. SMS, they want to keep that pipeline as clean as possible. Again, unfortunately, there, there are still companies out there that will you know, violate the rules. Um, one of the interesting campaigns that we saw about two weeks ago is Jiffy Lube. Did anybody receive a Jiffy Lube text message? Yeah, a few people. Um, what they did, and again, I don't know exactly what they did, but it seemed like from the research we did, was that they took all the phone numbers. When you go in to get your car service, they just take your phone number to call you maybe. Um, they took all those phone numbers, imported them into a, in an SMS provider, which again, we don't do because of that reason, and they sent them all a text message. Again, in the text message, they said, hey, if you don't receive these text messages anymore, reply stop. The problem is that damage has already been done. So I think it's 20% of people right now that own a mobile phone pay for their text messages. You know, they pay the 20 cents, the 15 cents per text message. They don't have a bundled plan. So for those people, you know, you've just charged them 20 cents. You know, and that can really anger some customers. Um, the, what is it, the carrier and FCC rules right now, um, the, the fine per text message is $1,500. That's not per text message out, that's per text message received. And some of these lawsuits that we're seeing right now, um, anywhere from like Fox to local nightclubs, you know, they're in the millions. 
of dollars because you know they send so many text messages out and unfortunately most companies think they're doing it legitimately they say hey well the customer gave me their phone number and they said I could text message them and the provider says oh yeah go for it because they make money every single time they send a text message you know we kind of restrict our customers to make sure they don't make those mistakes so if you guys are thinking about text message marketing make sure they opt in through a short code you really can't go wrong with that and again you know if uh, what was it? I've seen some case studies where people, they take phone numbers off of a business card and they plug them into their system. The redemption rates are, again, down at like 1% to 0.5%. Because again, I didn't really opt in to receive your text messages. So that's kind of the key with text message marketing. Make sure you're following the rules because number one, it'll make sure your customers are happy because you can lose a lot of customers by sending them spam text messages. Um, and number two, make sure you're using a company that follows all those rules for you. Uh, just a quick question on location-based services. If if I want to use uh, Tatango and I have a store, a particular store that I want to drive traffic to, is it possible to, to send alerts to those who are subscribed who are within a certain vicinity? So as, that's a great question. So he was asking about um, location-based. So let's say I have five locations in Seattle and I want to drive traffic to one of them. Well, we actually did a study with New York Pizza. They're kind of our guinea pig over the last couple of years. And we found that, what was it? I think it was 30 or 40%, again, Bellingham, that's their only location, uh, 360 area code. Uh, we found that uh, 30, per, 30 or 35% of the people uh, that were part of that list did not have a 360 area code. So that's number one. And a lot of services will allow you to target it via area code, but again, it just doesn't work, so why do it? Uh, so we just don't allow it on our service. The thing is, if you want to drive traffic to a specific location, either put it in the text message, so say only at this location, um, or another option is have multiple short codes for multiple locations. So um, I'm trying to think of a customer that I can say, uh, there's like a, a bakery and they have like five different locations. Uh, you can text, you know, bakery one, bakery two, bakery three, bakery four, bakery five to 6839, which one you want to join. The problem with that, and why I don't recommend that for most businesses, is, you know, let's say I opt in to bakery number three, but I'm closer to bakery number five when I drive home. You know, and then they're going to have problems redeeming the messages, um, plus the brand consistency isn't really that good. You know, because I'm sitting by my friend here, and I'm receiving, you know, from the bakery, but you're not receiving it. And then you get confused about why you're not receiving it, because you don't understand that it's bakery one, bakery two, bakery three. So for most, um, Franchises and multiple location places, what we say is one, sh one keyword, one short code text, you know, pizza to 68398. You know, and that applies to all your different, you know, locations. Yeah. Have you uh, looked at the integration of when a customer is in seat querying what ads are there against the uh, SMS? I'm not following. Uh, so I show up. I don't know. I, I see everywhere opt in. Yep. But I don't have a coupon. Have you seen the use of now I send a uh, SMS to you and I get a coupon? Yeah. So there are services, and we call them bounce back messages, where somebody will do that. The problem with those, in my impression, is that you know it's triggering somebody to opt in, and the, your redemption rates will be lower in the future because they just wanted that initial you know free appetizer. Um, I was recently traveling back from San Francisco, stopped in a restaurant. It said, opt in to our text messaging campaign, you'll get a free appetizer. Well, that appetizer cost them 12 bucks and lost revenue. And the minute I opted in, the minute I opted out, you know, because I don't want to get their future messages. So what we say, you know, in terms of text message marketing is make sure they're joining for the future, not joining for the initial kind of uh, promotion. There are things, you know, coming. Uh, Bluetooth is getting really strong right now. You'll walk into some gas stations, and if you have your Bluetooth enabled, uh, you know, Red Bull will send you a message directly to your phone. Um, again, that's kind of privacy issues. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, a lot of people also, you know, are using the NFC, um, which is near field communication. I think that's going to become really popular. But again, that's when you're actually at the business, which from my perspective, when they're at the business, you don't need to give them a discount. They're already there. You know, it's kind of like somebody coming into your restaurant and you giving them a Groupon, you know, uh, coupon, and, and they were already going to buy something already. 
So from you know, my perspective, you want to get them when they're at church, at the pool, at the, at the gym, and you say, hey, come in tonight you know, to drive traffic to your business. I was thinking it was an opportunity to upsell. To get them to buy more. Yeah, and actually I've seen that before where, you know, buy, if, again, if they're smart, um, you know, you could, if you know the average ticket is $12, you know, they text message in and you tell them to spend 15 you get a dollar off. So yes, that would be something you could do. Yeah. Um, have you done the butt in, butt in the seats tests uh, against Foursquare yet? Because I've seen like Applebee's has check in five times, you'll get a free appetizer. So no, um, and the reason we haven't is, you know, I look at marketing from a local business standpoint is you focus on the ones that have the most amount of people. You know, Foursquare just has, in my impression, su such a small user base um, that I don't even think we could actually even measure it or compare it against SMS because SMS has such a large user base. Again, the graphs would just be ridiculous. Um, but again, it's something you can test too. You know, I, and that's definitely for small businesses. If you're doing consulting, test all these things. For some businesses, SMS just doesn't work for some reason. But for the majority, it does. So, you know, if you want to compare, you know, Foursquare and SMS, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Can, uh, if you had a pool of, you know, if you had a pool of 10,000 names, uh -huh. can you use data of some other activity to trigger a specific message? If you're trying to track, if it's a event-based activity, you know, you, you, you're keeping points on something. So, yep. hey, you just hit the 1,000-point level and that triggers? So his question was, can you... You use almost like a CMS system where you know, you're figuring out you know, if this person has come in so many times, then you send them a specific text message compared to another person. Our service, no, just because we focus on just being the best at sending one text message to a lot of people. Um, there's companies like Hip Cricket, uh, they're a local company. Uh, they will build out systems that integrate with your system, but you're talking, I think, don't quote me on this, but their minimum spend, I think, is like $3,000 a month you know, to integrate and, and have an account manager. The average, or the actually entry level price for our service is $24. So it's just kind of you know, how much you're willing to spend and, and how intense the service needs to be. But again, that, that is definitely something that can happen. You know, once you check in a certain amount of times, then you get these special text message offers. Uh, but that has to be built in with your CMS system. Well, thank you, that's about all the time we have. For Thanks, questions you right now, um, you're more than welcome to stick around after we're done. Talk with Derek for Perfect. as long as you'll be around. Cool. So thank you again. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the board, I'd like to offer you this token of our appreciation oh, for you sharing your time cool. and thank your you. expertise with us today. Perfect. So Thanks. we'd like to thank you, thank to Tango, and we'd also like to thank our sponsors, Wagner Edstrom, as well as the uh, Microsoft Services broadcasting network. We actually have a representative from our sponsor today, so Tax would like to say something. Get outside, enjoy the sun. <laughs> it's really nice out. That's where I'm going. Thank you so much. So next month, our event in June, it's entitled Extending Your Event Through Social. We don't have a date yet, so please uh, just keep in touch with us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at smbseattle.com. Uh, Derek was so awesome as to uh, create a little QR code for his presentation. So if you're able to download it today, please do so. If you are not able to do that, we will have the deck up on SlideShare in a couple of hours. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, how could we forget this? We wouldn't be having these events every month if not for the hard work and dedication of our wonderful SMB Seattle board. So please, any board members in attendance, stand and be recognized for all you do. Yeah. Thanks again. That's all we've got. We'll see you next time. <laughs>